I'm so happy that you can join us for the takeout. This is the takeout with Kev the Red come on, come and on, Pastor come on. Angie. This is week three of us going through the word of the Lord uh, on, on this and I'm so excited. So what we're doing is we're actually um, tracking uh, with the Bible project, the New Testament, the New Testament in one year. Come we're going on. through the New Testament in one year and we're going to show you how to do that. So if you want to learn how to put together a group, you can find the details below and then also if you want to uh, you know do it with your family start a dg just get on it get online and track with us and so we are on week three True. of this and yes. i'm so excited because kev the red hey, is hey, leading hey. us on week three <laughs> uh just sharing some takeouts we're sharing what can you expect as you go into your week mm. and our own personal takeouts True. True. um yeah hence the name the takeout come on come on all right so chapter 12 13 That's 14 right. first you know 15 it's almost like it's not Sunday school Jesus. All right. You know, like how Sunday school Jesus is, you know, you want to really explain so that everyone gets it. He's a you want sweet to be, Jesus. Yeah. You know, it's you want to be careful with mm. your words so you don't hurt mm. anyone. It's almost like Jesus is saying, level up. All right. Like, I, I've, I'm, I'm, he's the king. He's given you the the heart of the kingdom with the with the with the beatitudes. He's given you the 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 nature of the kingdom. But he's like. But you need to sort of step up All into right it, now, you know, like up. like level up into it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so, <laughs> amazing stories of you know you're gonna know a tree by its fruit. Mm. And so, insane, what kind of fruit are you giving? Not All just right. what you feel like, mm. but what fruit can people get from you? Okay. And I like that because after that he goes into uh, parables. All right. And a lot of uh, a, a lot of the chapter, at least chapter twelve, thirteen, uh, uh, towards the end, is parables, parables. Uh, parables. Parables. so this week I expect a lot of them All right. uh, and after each of them he comes to the disciples and says because you guys are searching because you, mm. you guys want something mm. deeper you don't want, just don't want the story you guys are leveling up All right now. he gives them the keys mm. of knowledge he gives them the, the secrets All right. of the kingdom are revealed uh, to them so the parables are leveling up oh come on yeah mm. yeah mm. because it actually says he ex- he says or speaks in parables mm. so that those seeing people may not understand mm. though hearing may not, may not hear and it's not because he's trying to people not to hear i truly believe that jesus had the capacity to convince someone beyond their belief all right come on he it's did. like a lawyer he's able to present the case Mbaka, you're like okay yeah yeah I saw the guy pull the gun, but maybe it's <laughs> not maybe, him. Maybe it's not him. <laughs> <laughs> so Jesus had the capacity to convince you mm. beyond your belief. Mm. But because he wanted you to believe by yourself, you to wow. really come to the point of wow. saying he is the son of God, he presents it in parables so that in the searching, right. you come to really see him to be who he says All he right. is. So, so it's not for the simple minded just, well, yeah. you know, it's not Sunday school Jesus, that's what we were saying. It's so people who are working their minds out to say, I want to understand this. And that's why I'm interested because we're going to be taking us into our first parable. I know. The parable of the sower. The parable of the sower. Come on. I absolutely love the parable of the sower. It's, I think everybody knows this parable where, mm. you know, the, you know, uh, God is the sower and he's dispensing seed, which is his word, which Come is on. life. And he dispenses it on different soils. Yep. I think the different the difference with me when I read it in Matthew yeah. is I noticed um, the, the different people who have sowed in my life mm. and i noticed that they've been uh god has has allowed his word to be sowed in my life differently by different people True. so throughout my lifetime yeah. so from when i was a child you know my parent my parents were a big picture my aunt were a big picture in, in helping sow the word of god in my life um and then also the you know coming up to all the way till i saw even how pastor M, uh, pastor linda these people sowed into my life the oh. word and i grew in it and so i i realized obviously i'm the soil and how mm. i how i receive the word yeah. how i posture myself and I, and i'm like in this season i'm praying that i i realized and i just my mind has been opened to the value of these people in sowing mm. into my life yeah and i think in this season we're talking about a lot about fathers and mm. spiritual fathers mm. and fathers in the ministry and fathers in church and fathers different fathers and what I'm seeing is that God puts his nature exactly. of sowing exactly. into people who become spiritual parents or spiritual fathers exactly. and mothers. And they sow spiritual words, seed mm. uh, into our lives. And we need to be able to recognize God's work exactly. in them to be able to distribute exactly. to us. Mm. Uh, for me, it's the same thing. There are people in life ministry, 
yeah. who sold God's word in my life, Pastor Kema, yeah. Pastor BX, Pastor wow. Kevin Derito, wow. uh, people who were very instrumental in uh, uh, ensuring that God's word comes to me in very specific seasons, just like I needed it. And, you know, I'm truly, I'm who I am today because of them. Because of them. Yeah, Pastor Moravi. And just oh, recognizing yeah. that these people are, have have spoken life to mm. me because the word of God is life. Come on. And he has spoken, they've spoken life to me and this, it has borne certain fruit mm. um, just by me believing, walking, uh, accepting this word and I've seen certain fruit in my life. Mm. And, I, and when I don't know why this time when I read it, I recognize I've, I have certain fruit in my life as a result of, of uh, you know, this, these words that were spoken over me, this guidance, mm. this calling out greatness in me. Yeah. And I just, I had a moment where I'm like, thank you, God, for this source, wow. this, this seed that has come. Thank you, God. I just... I just had a moment of of just accepting and being grateful for them. Yeah, and maybe today you can just take a pause right there. Uh, take someone who yeah. sold God's word to you. Uh, maybe it's even your DG leader. Just I tell know. them, you know what? Thank you for reminding us to read the word every day. Uh, maybe it's your campus pastor. Maybe it's uh, one of the pastors in your team, in your church rather. Uh, send them a text yeah. for us genuinely we want to say thank you to Pastor Morevi exactly. and Pastor Caro yeah. first of all for just allowing us to be able I to know. do this and have fun, <laughs> and have fun. <laughs> thank you so much for sowing God's word to our lives mm. every season that's true uh, but then the story is uh, yes the story parable of the sower the sower is sowing but it's also the parable of the soil exactly because there are four types of soil exactly. different types of yeah. soil um what soil do you like sort of uh, identify with or feel or that speaks to you in a certain way? Yeah. I think, um, well, let me see. I don't know if I identify with it, but I always, I always notice the, the hard, the mm. hard soil, the soil of, um, that was hardened, the, the thorns. Yeah. And, and to me, the reason I notice it is for me, it always speaks to people whose uh, life situations mm. have caused them to be hard. Wow. Whether it is divorce, whether it is your parenting situation mm. you came through, maybe you are, you were um you were molested or something happened to you and so it made your heart hard mm. and so there's a way that you receive the word yeah even if people say something or you you read the word you have a certain perspective and because your your heart is hardened you're unable to receive the mm. word and so even if the, the word is sweet it's unable to permeate the mm. rock but this is what i love about the word of the lord the word of the lord says he breaks hearts of stone oh come on Come and on. so I know you may have gone through a painful situation. You may have, uh, you know, lived through an imaginable trauma. Mm. But the word of the Lord says he breaks hearts of stone and gives us heart of, hearts of flesh. Come on. And because maybe because I'm, I'm into therapy, I usually take that word and I say only God can break a heart of stone. Mm. And so you've seen images and pictures of trees thriving in rocky ground and the, 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 the roots enter the rocky ground mm. and they still are established. And I'm like, that's what the word of the Lord is able to do. It's still able to be established no matter how you know what you've lived through no matter mm. the pain you've experienced god's word can still bear fruit in you wow. and so just to invite god to break hearts of stone come on there's nothing and no one that can stand in the way of god and so mm. that's the one that usually stands out to me which for me, one for me it's the next two soils mm. yeah the 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 rocky soil and the thorny soil mm. yeah the rocky soil in it's it it's interesting for me because uh, maybe you can read verse chapter 13, verse uh, 21. Mm. So this is a person who this, the word comes, they receive it with joy, then it starts growing and then it withers out. Yeah, mm. uh, Verse 21, you can read it. It says, yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while. And when, uh, when tribulation and persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. Yes. Yeah. There's a version that says that when trials and tribulation come because of the word. Mm. And so, you know, Pastor Angie, before you hear God's word, by the way, you're probably okay. Yeah, yeah you're fine. The problem is that when you hear God's word, you see God's word, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of mm. God. And so when you hear God's word, it builds faith in yeah. you. Yeah. So it starts building faith in you. Now, 
genuine faith must be tested. Mm. You see, Pastor Angie, if I sold you a, a jewel and I told you it's from iron, you don't even test yeah. it. You don't start saying, okay, let me ensure it's really iron. That's right. You know, like, it's iron, it's right? Iron. When I sell you a, a, a bronze and I tell you this is bronze, you don't even test it. It's copper. You don't test mm. it. But I tell you it's gold. Woo. I know. Immediately, like, I must test whether right. it's gold. That's right. You know, you go through the process of testing mm. whether this is gold. Why? Genuine gold, genuine stuff must be tested. Mm. And so the Bible tells us that our faith is like gold. Mm. And so if your faith is going to be proved as genuine, then it, it must, must be, be tested. tested. Now, that process of testing comes because of the word. Oh, wow. And so when the Bible tells you that uh, you're going to overcome whatever situation, now that word must be tested to see whether you actually have faith in it. Why? <laughs> genuine faith must be tested. Mm. And the more you know, the faith, the harder the test. That's it's just right. how it is. Yeah. That's why sometimes I tell guys when people say, me, I want to see a burning bush. Me, I want to see like Paul. I want to see light. I'm like, the greater, the clearer the call. <laughs> mm. The, the, the greater the struggle. The, struggle, hey. the greater the, like, Paul had to see light and hear a voice. Imagine. Because when he was going through the problems, he had to go to the point of saying, I heard. And I saw. I saw. Yeah. So for me, I'm like, me, God, I believe. Me, I believe. I don't. <laughs> that guy was bitten by a snake, I'm telling you. Then he just shrugged it off and continued to talk. Because I, mean, I heard. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and so the word has a way of attracting trials mm. and tribulations. The question is, many of us, the the appearance of trials and tribulation, it comes to negate the word. Yeah. We say God is not true. He Imagine. lied. I'm like, bruh, it's he's trying to oh, prove wow. himself faithful. Wow. He's not trying to negate the word, he's trying to prove himself faithful. I don't think we've ever had that perspective. Oh, come on, it's beautiful. Come on, it's come so on, sweet. Yeah. Come on. That's why this is a call the take Yeah, I know it's a take <laughs> <laughs> then the second soil. Mm. The reason why I, I really see myself as this second soil. Because, I mean, the that soil rather. The that soil, the problem is the that soil. The problem is not with the seed. Mm. It's not even with the sower. The problem is not even with the soil. The problem is the other things that grow together mm. with the seed mm. in the soil. Mm. Because the soil is able to bring stuff up, but the word is growing together with other things. And at some point, they start competing for sunlight and all that, and the word is choked. And the Bible says the deceitfulness, the deceitfulness of wealth and the cares of this world choke the word. Yeah. And so many times I see that as me. Uh, God's word is sown. God's word is sown and brings faith. It brings conviction. It brings all that. But at the same time, there is fear that is sown. There is, there is something else that is sown there and it grows together. And at some point I have to choose which one will grow, which one will, which one will I focus on in that sense. Um, and so every time we, 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 we put our hope on God and on money or mm. on God and on this other deal, on God and on this other thing, that's, that's where the dichotomy comes in. And at some point, it starts choking God's word in your life. It might even be a subconscious thing because even when you're saying so, you may be growing in the word and wealth is coming as well. Mm. And it's, it's, a, it's also a prophetic thing in this house True. that uh, you know wealth will come. And it may not even be a bad thing, but at some point, you may end up, it may end up choking it. Or pride. Yes. Uh, yes. Because know. as you preach or as you share God's word, it comes with recognition. Yes. And that may well up exactly. pride as well. Yeah. And so it's a, it means that there has to be there has to be a constant um what's it called? Soul searching, a constant mm. submission mm. so that so that the word of God is not choked out. Come on. Yeah. Come on. It's Come just on. it's just a reminder saying God may it never be choked out. Mm. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. And so again, just is giving parables and mm. he's speaking in this way so that those who really want will seek deeper. Yeah. But you know, guys, if you're watching this channel and you're reading this word, I really want you to know that you're among those who really want. That's right. <laughs> you're among all those who really want God's word and you're seeking out. And so the secrets of the kingdom mm. have been revealed to you. And that's what Jesus tells his disciples. Uh, later on, you're going to see the different parables. Again, there's a parable of the weed and the tears. Yay. And the wheat and the tears, rather. Uh, I love that parable. It's basically the, the good farmer comes and sows wheat. Uh, and then the um, the enemy comes and sows weed. As well. Yeah. And so I, I actually believe it's like weed, weed. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's why later on it says the weed will be burnt. Oh. Okay, okay, so I told you, I told you. It I don't know how burnt. you brought him here. Too. I don't understand this guy. 
But you know, many times people come to church and say, oh, church is hypocrites. I'm like, it's according to script. It's according to script. We have the wit and uh, we have the wit. That's true, by the way. <laughs> Those guys in church, they're just gossipers. Because we have the wit. It's, it's, we have the wit. <laughs> it's according to scripture. You know, I came, church, church girls and church boys are, are loose. Mm. It's according to script. Yeah. We have the wit. <laughs> we, if you, you are coming to check out the wit in our church, hey, you knock find yourself. Them and you, you go find, find them. <laughs> <laughs> you go find them. <laughs> yeah. But at the end of the day, yes. they'll be banned. It's, you know, it's like a gym. Mm. You, we, you go to a gym mm. and you find... If I went to a gym today and found someone like me, I can't live there and say, oh, the gym people are just hypocrites. There are people who are not fit. There are people who are not doing well. You, can, you can't... You, because in the same gym, there are people who are fit. Yeah, exactly. There are people who are doing well. But... The gym is for people like me exactly. to go there and to become mm. better off. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. So we, we, we leave church for less reason than to leave right. any other place. I never left my restaurant because, you know, uh, I don't know the chef, first of all. Yeah. You know, I don't know the pastor. Uh, <laughs> uh, these guys who serve me, they don't even say hi to me mm. any time. You know, like, you never leave a restaurant because of, of that. that. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't really know uh, where they source their, you know, their, their their produce from and all that. You know, the music is loud. I was sitting next to my neighbor. and me, me, me. We don't leave restaurants no, for that. No. Yet those are the reasons why we leave church for. It's amazing. It's amazing. Come on. Perspective. <laughs> yeah. Level up. Level up. Yeah. Level up. Level, level up. up. Yeah. Mm. Level up in our faith. Come on. Level mm. up in our faith. Let's grow in our faith. Let's remove the things that become hindrances for us from not growing in our faith. You know, mm. um, I don't like this. I don't like that. Level up. Level yeah. up as you listen to the parables. It's so cool. Yes. <laughs> then something drastic happens there by chapter 14. Mm. Uh, John the Baptist dies. I know. Um, and so Jesus takes a detour mm. to go and chill with his disciples. But then something major happens yeah, because people the follow them. Imagine. Yeah. Him, he just wants to mourn his friend, his brother. Yeah. His, and then the guys follow him mm. and interrupt him. What I love about it is that instead of Jesus being like, listen, dudes, I need some time. True. I got to check out. Mm. Instead, he has compassion. True. He has compassion and he sits and ministers to mm. them. And he had he had compassion on the leper. He had compassion on, on the people who were sick, the, the lady who touched him constant compassion mm. that really stands out to wow. me about jesus wow. and i love it and it teaches them and compassion even shows because later on the disciples come and says yo you know people we didn't have a plan for this yeah but you have about five thousand men you know not counting women and children at this point uh they need to go out and eat and do what, what does jesus tell them <laughs> it says you feed them Le- level up you, you, level feed them. you feed them i'm like Allah. <laughs> even me i was just following <laughs> <laughs> Jesus yeah. said, you feed them. You feed them. What? And I see Jesus telling some discipleship group leaders, yeah. you feed them. I know. <laughs> You're like, Allah? Yeah. yeah. I know you joined church juicy, but you, you feed, feed them. them. <laughs> hey, he's like, level up. Level up. Yeah, let me continue preaching. You feed them. Yes. Figure out the food. Figure out the food. What I love about this miracle is that it was, um, it's, it's, a, it's a powerful miracle because it sounds like a small thing, mm. but it was a big thing because they fed the 5,000 with all the few that they had. Yeah. The, mul- the way the multiplication happened, it's actually a big scripture for me coming into the year. Mm. And I felt, uh, and then in the end, there were 12 baskets left yeah. for each of the disciples. Come on. Come because on. he was like, because you leveled up. Mm. There's something because the you. miracle wasn't just uh, you know he uh, you know I always picture that the miracle was he he held like this then when he prayed multiple mm-hmm. food was just pouring pouring mm-hmm. out of his hands something like that mm-hmm. it was as they shared as they broke it as they broke it yeah. and I'm like it was me taking my faith leveling up and living out my faith that mm. the miracles happen. Come on. It's when God tells me, Pastanji, give the first fruit. Mm. That's leveling up. Wow. And when I give my first fruit in obedience, then it multiplies. True. Um, but it, let me just say, first let me just say if it was me, I would have gone to Jesus and said, the people are hungry because me, I'm hungry. Mm. We came here to chill. Then they've sort of come and said, I know you like people, you know, let me, I'm hungry. Then Jesus is like, no, level up your faith, mm. feed them, number one. And then the miracle happens. And then the level, the the then he leaves this food for us mm. out of the five loaves. As in how, how is ministry a blessing? When you walk in obedience, you have more than you desire. Oh, come on. Come and so on. even as you give your first fruit this year, or as you, you know, you walk in obedience and say, I'm going to start tithing, whatever mm. it is, walking in obedience, 
level up and see the miracle. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Well, after the feeding of the 5,000, something happens in the next chapter, mm. uh, in the next uh, verses rather, because the Bible says that, that Jesus gets the disciples to get on the boat to go to the other side. Then he dismisses the crowd. Yeah. And then the Bible says that he went up the hill to pray. And it's in that point that uh, it's in that point that um, that the the guys are now in the middle of the of the of the of the whatever of the of the of the sea. Wind is happening. The guys, the wind is actually against them, as the Bible says. And then just comes walking on water. Imagine <laughs> how is that story? For First you, of all, then? me I'd have to cut because mm. I'm like it's a ghost. I was like that. was a correct interpretation. <laughs> I was confused because he the, he went to pray, which is the usual thing. Yeah. And I'm like, beautiful, he went to pray. Mm. Then these guys decided to fish. I don't yeah. know. Then in the middle of it, Jesus rocks up. I was like, Bala. Mm. And as, even me, I'd have been like them. Mm. Uh, and then he comes the storm. Mm. Mm. You know what encourages me about this story? Mm. So they all see this thing walking on water. And the guys say, it's a ghost. Then Peter says, Lord, if it is you, tell me to come. Imagine. But in their mind, it's a ghost. Then the ghost says, come. And he goes. And he goes. Like, Peter, what if it's a ghost? <laughs> <laughs> like, yo. Me and I have been on the boat saying that. <laughs> like, yeah, what if it, like, you're going, but what if it's a ghost? But you know what had happened? Peter had walked with the Lord long enough that mm, he could design his voice. Oh, come on. That's beautiful. I don't know whether we've walked with the Lord long enough to design his voice in the midst of a storm. Because there are many times when the Lord says, come, but it's in the middle of a storm. Mm. Or he says, tithe, but it's in the middle of a storm. Or he says, give, but it's in the middle of a storm. Oh, wow. Or he says, forgive, but it's in the middle of a storm. Or he says, embrace, but in the midst of a storm. storm. Uh, be kind, but in the midst of a storm. Lord, do, do you know the fight I'm having with my wife or my husband or whatever? Hey. We're in the midst of a storm and you, you're telling me, be, be kind, show compassion, be patient. That's amazing. But have we learned to design the Lord's voice long mm. enough? that you can distinct it between it and a ghost. Aye. And it can dis- determine our next course of action. Level even up. if we are stepping into the unknown. Level into up. the the Because the wind was always there. Yeah. We, we, when Jesus is saying, come, the wind is there, the, 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 the waves are happening, the storm is happening. It was always there. But in spite of that, the, the guy walked. But God is asking us to level up. Level up. Yeah. Mm. Level up. That that theme is so clear. I mean, I, I hadn't seen it until you said it. Come on. That he's saying, you know, you, to hear some things, you must level up. Mm. To experience some things, you must level up. Mm. To distinguish my voice Come in on. the storm, you must level up. Yeah. Wow. And sometimes we fear leveling up because of failure. Mm. But I want you to see the Bible says that when Peter started to sink, he said, Lord, help me. Oops, sorry. He's the... the uh, <laughs> The Bible says uh, when he started to when he started when Peter started walk, to walking on water, the Bible says um, that uh, he he started he started walking on water. He started to sink. He cries out and said, "Lord, help me!" And the Bible says that Jesus stretched his hand and uh. helped him. Many times we fear to level up because of failure, but I want you to know that at the moment of failure, you're closer to Jesus than at the boat. Come Imagine on, somebody. you are. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hey. Jesus didn't run to him. Just literally stretched his hand. Wow. Peter failed when he was closest to, to Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. And so in your moment of failure, you're probably closer to Jesus than any other person. And he didn't need to pray the one hour for 30 a.m. prayers yeah. with video on and mics and YouTube. Just needed to say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. And the Lord stretched his hand oh, wow. and, and helped I him. I love it. It's yeah. a beautiful thing. I, I can't imagine the story they were having with Jesus as they went back to the boat. Yeah. Come yeah. on. I don't know what they were saying. Imagine, just, a, I almost felt, Emma, that's a good one to ask them. Yeah. What did you talk about? What did you talk about as you went back to the boat? Was it, was Peter saying, and yeah, you know, Lord, I'm sorry. And just saying, it's okay, I got you, bro. Yeah, I got I you. I told you I got your back. Hey, <laughs> Jesus. But you know what happens as well? They go back to the boat and the Bible says that everyone worshipped. Mm. But there were two kind of worshippers. Mm. There were people who were dry worshippers, mm. but there was one wet, wet worshipper. worshipper. Oh, come on. <laughs> Come, so on, silly. come on, come on, come on. There's one who was worshipping from, you know what, guys? I know you guys say he's the healer. Yeah. Me, I've been sick and I've been healed. Exactly. I know you guys say that he's a provider. I have lacked and he has provided. Exactly. Are you a wet worshipper today? Mm. Or you? Or at the moment of, of hardness, you, you, you remain in the comfort zone. And so you never see the fullness of what Jesus says he is oh because my, you never truly oh entered into it. Never up, man. Come on. 
Yeah. Yeah, take that leap of faith. Take that leap of faith. Yeah. Get off the boat, get, get into the, the water, boat. your worship going to be different. It's going to be different. Mm. We're worshiping, right? Come on. All right. <laughs> yes, me and me like me I cry every Sunday so maybe I'm I know you are <laughs> Our oh, music director takes water every time he's singing. He's a worshiper. I love it. That's so silly. Anyway. Yeah. 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 If you're not sweating, yeah. you're not a yeah. worshiper. Come dance. It's so sweet. Anyway, they, they, you know, I think there's a space for us to increase our faith and to say, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come. It is you. And to walk, to walk towards him. Yeah. Come. Level up. Level come on, up. Level up. Level mm. up. We're going to close this story. Yeah. Chapter 15, verse 1 to 20. That's going to be the last part we read on Sunday. It's very interesting because the Pharisees, they come, they see mm. the, the disciples eating without washing their hands and stuff. Mm. And um, and and they just says, you know, have they been defiled? And just says, no, um, the, the Pharisees are blind guides. Yeah. yeah. He's so rough. Rough, Jesus. Hey. <laughs> He's not the Sunday school Jesus, we know. I think, I think I don't know whether it's this place where the disciple says, um, uh, like explain this to us, but just says, just says to to them, verse verse sixteen, and he said to the, to them, are you also without understanding? Hmm? Do you I think there's a version that says, are you also dumb or something yeah. like that? <laughs> Hey, what I read this section and I was like, this is not the Sunday school Jesus. I this know. is not Sunday school. This Jesus. not he's 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 so rough. He says, listen. You need to level up your faith. True. Are you going to remain there like the Pharisees or mm. are you going to level up? Come on. And so I read this and I was like, hey, Baba, mm. I've left Sunday school Jesus. <laughs> he's not that guy I knew yeah. growing up. He's mm. a guy who's saying level up to my to my expectation of you. Come on. Yeah. I like what you're saying, Pastor Angie, because I believe that's what fathers are. As a father, um, it takes very little for my son to please me. Mm. But even when he's done the best, I'm still a father. I'm still mm. above him mm. to still expect more. Mm. Like, you know, so, you know, like my son, you know, he all he needs to do is, let's say, I don't know, like score a, a goal and then mm. I'm, I'm the happiest. Exactly. Actually, he needs scoring the goal. But he attempted it. But he attempted I'm the happiest. But then he becomes number one in his class with 98 marks. And I'm still, but Sean, why did you miss the two? Mm. I'm still expecting more. And I think that's where Jesus is. He's a good father. Because when the Bible talks about Jesus, it says his name should be Wonderful Counselor, Everlasting Father. father. So he's father to us as well. And so it takes a list to, 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 to have him, you know, excited about us. Like, wow, you're taking a step of it. I'm excited. But then he still expects more from us. That's right. Father. Like, that's level right. up. Son, level, level up. up. There's still more. Hmm. You can't remain at that same level you were last year. You can. There's still a higher there's level. There's a higher level. Into. Yeah. 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 And I think, I think that as we as we go into this week, um, you know, ask God to level us that you would level up, mm. that you'd move into that space, that nothing would hold us back. True. No limitation, no coding, no, mm. no, what you call it, no, um, you know, previous thinking would prevent you from leveling up that Come you on. will not remain like a pharisee mm. you level up and be able to recognize the voice of god yes that you would be able to step out by faith mm. and, and experience things that to become wet worshippers. yeah come on okay. and i guess that's why we are going through this word uh as word that uh, god's word comes into our hearts mm. into our lives what the scripture is showing us here is that it, det- it then determines what we say. Exactly. Because we are we are defiled by what we say, not what has come in. Mm. But as God's word comes into our hearts, we are able then to speak something different. There's a dying world out there that needs to hear a different word. Mm. Everyone in your office d- is discouraged. The difference is what you say. The difference is in your speaking. The difference is in the words that you bring forth uh, in that place. Uh, this is week two of uh, prayer and fasting as well. I'm hoping that you're, you're going to travel through mm. it. You're going to say, last mm. year I didn't make it. Last year I broke halfway through it. But you're all being called to level up. Exactly. As you grow to a new level of faith, even the things that you'll be doing will be different. I want to see the miracles that will happen in Jesus' life because that's what, because he leveled up. He, he rose up to what the mm. father expected mm. of him in that sense. And because of that, the father was able to release miracles through his life. That can be us. That can be you and I. So let's go through God's word. Mm. Continue the fasting. I hope you're discussing these conversations in In your your DG. DG, uh, And in your WhatsApp group or in your, not WhatsApp group, but in your Bible um, 
up. Talk about these things. Encourage one another. If there's someone who's lagging behind already, talk to them. Be your brother's keeper. Tell That's them, right. I'm, not, I'm not in your post. And uh, let's be able to encourage one another, even as you continue listening to the takeout with me, Kev the Rev, and Pastor Angie. Thank you all. Have a blessed week. See you next week. That's right.